Andy Warhol was born in 1928 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. David Hockney was born in Bradford, England in 1937. The artist known as Christo was born in 1935 in Gabrovo, Bulgaria. Wayne Thiebaud was born in Mesa, Arizona in 1920. Peter Max was born in Europe but raised in Shanghai, China for the first 10 years of his life. In 1953, Peter's family emigrated to America. Keith Herring was born on May 4, 1958. He grew up in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. Jasper Johns was born in 1930 and grew up in several small towns throughout South Carolina. Larry Rivers was born in 1923 in the Bronx, New York City. These artists, and as many as 60 more from all walks of life, exploded onto the art scene and defined the pop art movement. As with most great art movements, pop art arose from a rebellion against an accepted style. Pop artists thought the abstract expressionists who came before them were pretentious and over-intense. Huh. Forget it. Have you seen our heap? Forget your heap. You'll get a brand new Ford every other year. As a movement and style, pop art started in England in the 1950s and made its way to the United States during the 1960s. The term pop art first appeared in Britain and referred to the images of mass media advertising, comics, and consumer products. In Britain, the 1950s were a period of optimism following the end of wartime rationing and a consumer boom exploded. Pop art focused its attention upon familiar images within popular culture. Pop art also coincided with the youth and pop music phenomenon of the 1950s and 60s and became very much a part of the image of the fashionable and hip London scene. Matt, it's the sloppiest. In 1959, Peter Blake emerged as a full-fledged pop artist with his group of collage-based paintings of pop musicians, film stars, and pinup models. He used imagery from comics magazines and advertisements evoking the swinging 60s. He even designed album covers for Elvis Presley and the Beatles. He is best known for his cover designs for the Beatles LP, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Blake also placed Marilyn Monroe in his pictures in the same way that Warhol was immortalizing Marilyn Monroe in the USA. Sir Peter Blake was knighted by Queen Elizabeth alongside Mick Jagger in 2002. Pop artists share the same interests. The album cover for Yellow Submarine by the Beatles was created by pop artist Peter Max. After completing high school, Max continued to study art at the Art Students League in New York City. The animated film Yellow Submarine is a swirling mixture of pop art images brought to life with a clever anti-war message woven into it. Peter Max's art is greatly appreciated for its bold use of color, with unrestrained optimism and youthful vitality. Peter Max was on the cutting edge of the media and technology wave, bridging the art traditions of the past with the art of the future. Wow, what's that aftershave you're wearing? Gah! You high karate have to shave is so powerful, it drives women right out of their minds. That's why we have to put instructions on self-defense in every package. High karate, the brisk splash-on after shave that smooths and soothes and cools. In pop art, the epic was replaced with the everyday, and the mass-produced awarded the same significance as the unique. The gulf between high art and low art was eroding away. Pop art generally involved the use of existing imagery from mass culture, images already processed into two dimensions. All media advertising and even comic strips were favorite subjects for pop art's celebration of consumer society. The most famous of the pop artists was the cult figure Andy Warhol, whose innovations will have an everlasting effect on the art world. 
Warhol began as a commercial illustrator. Andy Warhol worked in all available mediums. Silkscreen drawings, prints, photography, sculptures and installations. Warhol even produced a series of experimental films. His film Empire was a static eight-hour shot of the Empire State Building. Roy Lichtenstein, born in 1923, continued pop art's commitment to low-brow popular culture by seizing upon comic strips and the standardized imagery seen in the newspaper comic sections. The topics of his paintings using this technique reflected upon violent action and sentimental love. His paintings look like one enlarged frame. The work is simplified, two-dimensional and outlined forcefully in black. The dots are a reflection of the cheap printing process used in black and white newspapers known as halftone for standard cartoon fare. <laughs> Keith Haring had a rebellious adolescence. After high school, he enrolled in the Ivy School of Professional Art in Pittsburgh. In 1978, Haring moved to New York City and studied at the School of Visual Arts. In 1980, Herring began painting in the subways, on empty black panels which had been put there to cover up old advertisements. Using simple outlines, he created a language of icons and symbols. These works would appear seemingly from nowhere and surprise subway riders in the morning. The word of mouth surrounding these drawings brought Herring to the attention of the art world, and his career above ground skyrocketed. In 1986, Herring stopped doing subway drawings. Herring directed his art to a wide range of social causes. In 1987, he participated in Art Against AIDS, a benefit exhibition engaged in a widespread campaign for AIDS awareness. In 1988, Keith learned that he was very sick with the same disease. At that time, doctors could do little to help people with AIDS. Keith knew he was going to die, but he was very brave and kept working as hard as he could until the end. He made posters to tell people about the sickness and gave money for doctors to search for a cure. Although Keith Haring's life was cut short by AIDS, he moved pop art into a new generation, dissolving the boundaries between fine art and popular culture, between the gallery and the street. Pop artists left the holy temple of art behind and approached an empty canvas as an opportunity to address the visual noise of their daily visual environment, such as magazine illustrations, advertisements, and comics. They agreed that it was time to focus on the now and on popular culture. By bringing to contemporary art the vocabulary of the masses and by embracing elements previously considered vulgar by the art world, these pop artists made imagery understandable and accessible to all. The movement viewed commercial culture as raw material for artistic endeavor. Thus, the pop artists energized and returned art to the public at large. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. I'm in joys got nuts, mounds don't. I'm in joys got real milk chocolate, coconut and munchy nuts too. Mounds got deep dark chocolate and chewy coconut. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. Peter Paul, I'm in joys got nuts, Peter Paul, mounds don't. Because sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. <laughs>